There's never a quiet moment between Greece and Turkey. Now, Greek Foreign Minister uh, blames Turkey for threats of war after the Turkish Foreign Minister threatened to take action against Greece in the wake of a military exercise in the Aegean Sea. So with us now are Yanis Koutsoumidis from Greece and uh, Dr. Murat Aslan from Turkey. And I want to ask you both uh, first, uh, this language of war and threats by both sides, this can get out of hand very easily. Do you see uh, a real danger here? Let's start with you, Mr. Kutsumidis. Yes, well, uh, just to start with, uh, it's a language of war that starts from uh, Turkey's side. The Greek side always maintains a position and argument that it wants to maintain peace and does not want uh, confrontation. Uh, Turkey says that uh, there is no patience on their side anymore because Greece is evading uh, dialogue or is not demilitarizing the Aegean uh, islands. Uh, so we are facing a situation where uh, maybe an accident might happen or there could be a red flag operation in the coming months in order to justify uh, military confrontation in the region. This is totally illogical because uh, no one can benefit, will benefit from such a confrontation. I think it's uh, based on uh, domestic politics needs uh, by Mr. Erdogan and his party, which are uh, doing rather bad in uh, polls ahead of uh, the presidential election in uh, mid-2023. But this is really serious because we haven't seen this kind of language from Turkey since decades. So uh, let, let me let me uh, switch to Dr. Aslan uh, in Turkey, um, internal politics or other uh, reasons? Well, I believe that it's a saturation because what Greeks did for centuries actually pushed Turkish politicians to raise their voice, you know. For instance, 23 September 1821, Mora Peninsula, they massacred 32,000 Turks and Jewish people. And right after then, they continuously pushed back Turks from Anatolia. And there was a continuous uh, act of Greeks leaning on the other powers. And today, just claiming that it's the international law, even though Turkey is not a party to some portion of these arrangements, that Greeks are right, etc. Well, we are academic. First, we can't impose to be hawkish, uh, pro-war uh, individual, especially during lecturing or during any presentation like this. But we have to be objective exactly to the audience to inform them well. If Greeks are to support PKK in Lavrion camp, just around the Athens, if Greeks uh, are continuously propagating against Turkey in the United States or in Europe and propagating against the interests of Turkey in the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. That means, well, the latest drop will somehow, uh, you know, be a water on the ground. So I think this is just a maturation of what had been witnessed and experienced uh, because of the Greek uh, agitation. So this is what I observe for the uh, okay. last decade. Actually. So Mr. Kosomitis, this is uh, according to Dr. Aslan, it, it, it's more than just the islands, it's it's the PKK, it's, it's a wider thing. Well, I, I totally reject any allegations that Greece is uh, training or assisting any PKK terrorists, etc. Uh, the Lavrion camp is open to any journalist or whoever wants to visit and uh, it's not a closed camp or a secret camp, something. This is totally uh, out of fantasy that the Greece is training terrorists. On the other side, there are two problems in Eastern Mediterranean and the Aegean. Uh, Turkey maintains that uh, it needs some special treatment in uh, its uh, hydrocarbon interests in the region. There have been uh, successive calls by the Greek side, even the Egyptian side and the Cypriot side to come on a table and see what can be done to share the, the wealth of the Eastern Mediterranean. But it's very difficult because Turkey maintains that uh, the any deal cannot come 
according to international law or law of the seas because it is a special case and it should be treated as a special case. Okay, so, let, uh, me, let, me, let me advance a little bit. I really want to see if there's any chance for a diplomatic channel here. Dr. Aslan, is there any diplomatic channel at all between the two countries? Well, it totally depends on how Greeks uh, act. Let me give an example uh, for the affiliation of PKK and Greece. Right after the deportation of Öcalan from Syria, it was the Greek member, uh, Greek uh, Kalenderidis, a member of Greek intelligence community, who guarded him, who just supervised him, and also took him to Athens. That means there was an organic, you know, affiliation, and Öcalan actually confessed it. So we may have a diplomatic channel, but. It depends totally on Greeks with a logical and wise manner. Okay, let's ask the Greeks, uh, Mr. Kotsomitis, diplomatic channel. The, yes, uh, right now, as I'm hearing from uh, Greek government, they want to maintain, they want to reopen a diplomatic channel with the Turkish government. But uh, since the uh, last meeting of the Prime Minister of Greece and the President of Turkey, there have been two incidents where Turkish Air Force violated the uh, Greek islands in the Aegean. So there was a stop in the talks, the military talks, uh, delicate talks that could lead to de-escalation in the Aegean. I think it's mostly part of a political will on both sides to overcome the rhetoric right now and sit on a table and show that they are willing to at least de-escalate the situation. I okay. sense that the Greek side has some will to sit on a table with Turkey and find ways out of this uh, terrible situation right now.